decided to get married this year um, mm. at the start of the year i was like the way that our society now is is going yeah. it's telling young women that you don't have to ma get married mm. you can get your bag first but how important is it for um Ghanaian men to marry um Ghanaian women huh. Welcome to How's Your Heart Podcast. It's Lindo for short. Thank you again for joining us. And today I have two friends of mine that are joining us. And of course, Matt from Men's Corner and our special guest. Hello. This is Fritz. Fritz, we met at the office, so that we work at the same place. Mm -hmm. um, Fritz, before we go any further, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, so hi, I'm Fritz. I... I'm Ghanaian. <laughs> um, I'm Ghanaian. Um, I've been living and working in the UK for over two years now. And I'm an accountant, just like Matt. Okay, that's great. Um, this we met during lunch. Like it was one of our colleagues who became our friend introduced us yeah. at lunch and we haven't looked back. So, yeah. Friends. I don't remember that day though. You don't remember that day? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I, I think... I, I can't explain it without <laughs> putting names down, okay. but yeah, it one was it was one of our our mates. <laughs> and going back to how we know each other, mm. um, I think we we obviously I think chatted around March or something. Okay. And um, that was I think that was before the lunch thing. Okay. And um, one of the things that we talked about and that impressed me about you is. Um, the thing that we wanted to start at the office. Do you remember? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, myself and friends, we wanted to. Uh, we felt that there was a need for mentorship, and one of the things that we did together was mentor um, uh, high, school high school students, students yeah. in the south of London. So it is in our hearts to just give back, and also we wanted that to be part of the mm -hmm. office culture. Yeah. So that's. I think that for me, that's what drew me closer to you, and you always like. A big brother okay. so what what do you remember about us um specifically, specifically. well individually, <laughs> individually um how we met and and i think like okay i'll get to this part mm -hmm. about you just being adopted as a south african <laughs> <laughs> no we'll get there we'll get there, we'll get there. but mm -hmm. yeah what what was your first impression um individually and how you just so comfortable around other Africans. Other Africans yeah. in general. Um, I think I've not I've not really been exposed to other Africans until, or I wasn't exposed to other Africans until I came to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that, and this is something that I've been thinking about over the past few days leading yeah. up to this. <laughs> right? um, as as Africans, we are there are a number of differences. But there are so many similarities. Yeah. Like, right. like we may not speak the same language, but if you know, you know. If that makes sense. <laughs> like so, so we are able to relate to each other, and oftentimes our upbringing is typically the same. Mm -hmm. It's very family oriented and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so we we my my elder sister will say that like Africans are tribal and communal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. <laughs> and so. I think we then um, found a community in each other here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, like when you move abroad, you can't be lonely. Yeah. Right? Very, very so cool. then to have like 14, 15 very good friends, mm -hmm. no agenda, just people who truly care for each other yeah. in the UK. Don't where flex like, too hard, man. <laughs> no, I'm not flexing. <laughs> like, 14 friends. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, how dare I? How dare I? How dare In just I? one country. <laughs> so, so to have like um, that group of people where mm. you know that you can trust on them, you can rely on them. Mm. I think I've said in like different conversations elsewhere mm. that like when you move abroad, like your friends become your family. Yeah. Very, very you true. Get it. And and you would want a family that you can trust and rely on. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like I can rely on you too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, just touching on you just embracing the South African community I think one of the things that I said to Matt and I shared on the podcast is that 
you will find friends but we were so intentional in trying to make friends mm -hmm. where we work and um yeah we became really good friends and we went away for christmas yeah and i thought you know what i i've been thinking would i have been so comfortable around you know um people from another country yes we're africans mm -hmm. but the way that we there were 11 South Africans and you yeah. were the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, how did you find that whole culture? Obviously, um, it is quite different. Yeah. And um, yeah, and yeah, how was the experience uh, for you? Um, okay, so I guess I like I'm a huge believer of like um, getting what you give off. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. if you if you if you are if I am open, I know that I will get open back. Mm. Right. And given that we are very different in terms of language and stuff, right? Mm. Um, like English is a common language, right? But then also, I think hanging out with you guys a lot of time, you would see that after after <laughs> to pick up your lingo as well. Yes. After to pick up your lingo as well. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you guys embrace me in as much as I embraced you. Mm -hmm. So um, to the extent that like there was that kind of like cohesion and mm. like everyone giving off their best and everyone being open i think it just we just grew to, like closer together naturally yeah. without uh, further ado i will introduce the topic for today okay. um today we are talking about marriage culture mm. that marriage culture is from just young adults but also from where we come from we are from south africa and we already said that you're Ghanaian. Yeah. <laughs> Did someone I, say you are? Ghanaian, Ghanaian. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Ghanaian. <laughs> Ghanaian. <laughs> and you already mm. mentioned that mm. um, you get love from your wife. So, mm. I mean, congratulations. Thank you. Thank yet you. Again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, we brought you on here to just yeah. talk about um, what led you to the decision mm -hmm. and um, just marriage culture, how you grew up seeing it, yeah. and we know the climate around um, marriage right now. People don't want to get married. Yeah. There's a lot of divorces, and we're not going to focus on the negative part. We're not yeah. going to focus on the divorce rate. We're just so happy that our friend is married, <laughs> and <laughs> and we just want to talk about um, how how is it growing up? Did you? have a good role model of what a good marriage is okay. um, and how that influenced you to getting to that decision. Oh, okay. Um, so, Deep. Um, yeah, yeah, you, it's not you need, you need a second to think about this. Um, so, yeah, my, my, of course, I lived or I grew up with my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I try to say that because I know how it is like off times in SA. So mm. um, based on discussions I've had with people. Um, so yeah, I grew up with both parents. Um, Let me fix that, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I grew up with both parents. Um, so the, the support that I was getting from both parents was there like through, through my life growing up. Mm. Um, sorry, my throat. <laughs> 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 Take a break. Uh, yes, yeah, so like, can I have like some of that seed? <laughs> no, you um, can anytime. Yeah. Okay. But so so through. yeah. Um. So so I had the presence of both parents growing up. Um. That was a huge thing. Um. And like all my aunties and my uncles and stuff like that, they were they were all together. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was what it looked like for me growing up. Um. In terms of having um a father figure, a mother figure throughout my life. And, you know, we, we get taken care of by, like, our extended family as well, mm -hmm. right? So, um, growing <laughs> up, when I used to go for vacation and my uncles and my aunties, like, yeah, they were all together and stuff like that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've always had that mother-father figure role, mm -hmm. um, like, through, throughout my life. Um as to whether that influenced me, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, but I've been dating for for like four years before I got married. Also, Ooh, okay. um, yeah. So you so you met and I have been together for a while, um, and so I I decided to get married this year. Um, mm. At the start of the year, I was like, yeah, I want to settle down, um, and and I think I've told you guys that um 
we work together right yeah. and and there are certain intangibles <laughs> that go beyond like love and stuff like how the person reacts in like <laughs> down situations and stuff like that that's are very critical like mm. i i i even <laughs> and i have never like had a fight you know the the way fights can get like catty and all that yes. stuff, right like we yeah it may be emotional but like we 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 resolve it in, in a mm. civilized manner mm. um mm. and then we take the lessons from that um mm. So That's beautiful. St- yeah, so stuff like that, like like um like if you see that you guys can work together for the long term, I think that that's a good sign that the person you are with is right. Yeah. Um, um so, sorry to catch you because yeah. you did mention uh at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Uh I remember we spent Christmas together. Yeah. You did you talk about your yeah. wife from time to time, like mm-hmm. it's those things that you mm-hmm. very passionate you well then it was your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um but January, mm. we're about to go into start of work, New Year's resolutions. Yeah. What prompted that decision? Um, okay, so Yvette and I had talked about it. So it was on the back of my mind. Okay. I had to just decide on the timing. Ah, okay. um, so at the beginning of the year, and you know I prompt you guys to do an assessment of like your lives and stuff like that. Yes. Um, so at the beginning of the year, I was doing that internal assessment to see mm. how I wanted my year to go and stuff like that. Mm. And I was like, okay, like what am I waiting for as well? <laughs> like, like, and that's a legitimate question. Like, what yeah. are you waiting for? Yeah. Um, so if, if you work together, why not? So um, I did that. Um, so of course, I, I'm, I'm here and then she, she's in Ghana. So I did that, but like in terms of arranging, I'm I'm glad my parents were very sharp about it. I just told my dad that hey, like I'm looking to get married. What time are you available to meet her parents? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and my dad was like, okay, mid February or something like that. And then like the process just went on that way. I told him that I want to do a legal marriage, mm-hmm. um, which of course, like if you're African, you want to do legal marriage. Where is that coming from? Yeah. Um, but but after a while and some pushing. Um, I, I, my dad, like, agreed or acquiesced, whichever word you want to use. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, um, he did, and then I got married in May. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. I just want to go back to things that you touch on okay. in terms of, like, the family structure, because yeah. I think, as you mentioned, yeah. we've had conversation around family structures yeah. in South Africa, yeah. and it doesn't, well, from my experience, yeah. um, it doesn't look like that for most of the time. Okay. For most people, it's not, um, yes, you have aunts, you have uncles, but most of them are not married. Okay. And that was true for me. I was raised by a single mom, mm-hmm. and um, my grandfather passed while I was <coughs> very young, so also my grandmother okay. um, was single for, I mean, I was six when my grandfather passed. Okay. So already around, there isn't, that modeling of a i'll say um marriage i don't want to say family structure because that's what i knew um and up until i think i was 25 i never thought about marriage so at what point in your life i yes you talk about it with your wife now but at what point do you go yeah I want to get married. And how old were you? So to just kind of paint a picture of yeah. you making that decision, mm-hmm. being influenced by um, what you see around you yeah. and um, just the marriage culture in Ghana as well. Okay. I think, <clears throat> I think um, I'll talk about it from the girl side and the guy side. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll talk about it from the girl side and the guy side. I think culturally, um, a lot of parents push their kids to get married after university um so so after university like um a huge part of the next step after university is to settle down Mm -hmm. um so like you see um parents especially mothers pushing their daughters of course because you know there are considerations for your biological clock and stuff Mm -hmm. right um pushing their daughters to get married settle down and try to have kids early um so yeah, there's that. And I think on the guy's side of things, it is about trying to ensure that like you have a stable career path. Mm-hmm. Um, so you like you have a job, you know what you're doing, then you want to settle down. Um, so, so yeah, those are the two angles with which we look at it. So mm-hmm. there's, there's sometimes 
overdue pressure on girls to get married early. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. right, like after university, they expect you to like get married and stuff like that, and then mm-hmm. have kids early. Which I don't know about overdue being warranted, but mm-hmm. yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> so. It is what it is. Yeah, so as you mentioned, like there's the pressure from the female side, mm-hmm. and then. On the male side, there's more focus on your career once you have settled yeah. into that, then go into marriage. Yeah. So do you find that generally in Ghana, there's a huge age gap between the wife and the husband? Um, I think before it was, there was okay. a huge like age gap, okay. um, but modern generations have bridged the gap. Um, so like, there's a one year difference between my wife and I, mm. right? Um, and like between my dad and my mom, it was like what? Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> like ten. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. So there's that. Then that's like um. I think the gap has reduced as time goes on, and I think um just because uh, now if you were to have like such a huge gap, it mm. almost seems like your interests are not really aligned at the point in uh, time. Yes, makes right? sense. So if like like it is a decade away, imagine like. The person like is in like the eighties or something. Loves eighties <laughs> music. You love nineties, like that mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um. So so I think there's like modern generations or younger generations, mm-hmm. um, have to have that or like to have that, one year, two years, or even like you are the same age, right? Because mm-hmm. you are literally going through life together, yeah. like your transitions together. Yeah. yeah. And how how have you found like your experience kind of family structures around the people, like family and neighborhoods, how, how is that from your upbringing? Okay, so I have a similar st- structure to Lindo in terms of I grew up with a single mother mm-hmm. and I, yeah, but it wasn't like grew up, it was my grandfather and grandmother, grandfather died when I was quite young, but my grandmother was there. But he, my grandfather was a very present person in my family's life. So they, whenever they talk about my grandfather, they talk about him as a good man. Yeah. And a lot of the values that are still instilled in us today come from my grandfather. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother also just upheld them. So that's what it started at. Um, but with me... It, like, you know, when you, when you grow up, you don't think anything is wrong because this is all you know. No, yeah. And I, yeah, I grew up with my mom. My mom <laughs> loved me. And one thing my mom <laughs> always did was she would always p- uh, bring in a lot of um, male figures in my life. Okay. So even from, because I've got an older sister. So she figured that because there's no, like, older brother or anything, I, during the holidays, I would go spend it with my aunts and uncles. And um, they have got uh, cousins that are male. So, Question. as in, yeah. Have you spoken to your mom about that? Was it like an intentional thing? Yes. Yeah, so she would. So at first, I didn't think of it, but yeah. growing up, she mentioned that like during the holidays, just so that I'm surrounded by more male figures. Okay. And yeah, and then what to do is for my family, like my my family are big on like growing in healthy ways. So we would have like sessions together so like my cousin so my uncle would like bring like uh, some of his male friends and we would have like i, I don't know how like yeah we'd meet up life and chats life chats and like yeah. <laughs> we would talk about being a man and everything yeah. so it was these were things that were instilled in but like they wouldn't come from a conventional way of like oh my father taught me this yeah and no it was more <laughs> of a there's a recognized need for male figures okay. and they fill that void. Okay. So again, that's what I didn't think of my upbringing as something wrong yeah. just because I'd get those nuggets from somewhere else. Okay. So yeah, so that's how I grew up. But the thing of marriage, because at the end of the day, I didn't grow up in a household of marriage. Marriage wasn't the ultimate thing for me. Mm. So I never like... There's that thing of like when you grow up, you're like, yo, I can't wait to get married mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. For me, it was more of a, 
I guess the the baby in me, like making sure I'm able to take care of my family, take care of my mom, yeah. my sister, being able to take care of myself. Mama, mama. Mm. <laughs> so as yeah, in, in South Africa, I'm Spady, and we are known to be mama's boys. Oh, so okay. yeah, so um, that's why she's saying babo <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so because of that, however, like for me. Marriage has always been something that I've looked up to okay. just because I've seen it work. So, like, in my own personal spaces where I've seen, like, I've seen marriage work. Yeah. So, it was never something that was, look, like, I never thought of it as something like, oh, it's bad. Like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't fear marriage. Mm. Yeah. But just something, because I didn't grow up with it, it didn't feel natural. <laughs> but okay. it was something that I was like, ah, oh, this looks amazing because... Yeah. And I was just like, hey, like the people that I see are married yeah. look happy. So yeah. it wasn't a bad thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. but I knew, like, especially growing up with like a lot of my uh, friends, marriage wasn't always the best thing. Just because yeah. in South Africa, we do have a lot of uh, me- uh, thing in violence, like male abuse, m- fathers abusing their children, fathers yeah. abusing their wives, and because of that, like there's this thing of men, like marriage seems to benefit the man only. So I think like these days, that thing of marriage isn't as weird. It's not looked up as like it used to be in the past. Okay. I'm not sure. Like, do you, when you look at marriage, like from a South African context, do you think of, hey, like I want to get married or do Mm. I want to get married to a South African man? (laughs) Um, yeah, you yeah. said a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me, I had never, I think we, the environment that we are yeah. in influences us a lot. And you might not intentionally say, I want this because of my environment, yeah. but it will mold you. You yeah. will, like what you're saying, that your uncles were there and your first, um, you were not gunning for marriage, but you knew that you had to take care of your um, your, your family first yeah. so I think for me because that was not something that was that I saw even with my friends or like most of my friends are, are not married um, with um, my aunts and whatever the case may be um, I find that um, when I turned 25 I was like oh <laughs> this could be something this could be something, <laughs> <laughs> could be something. <laughs> like I, 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 ne- I didn't grow up feeling like oh you know I want to get married I want to have this I want to have that but now um, post 25 that has been something that's been on my mind and mm-hmm. I'm like oh okay because I've chased something else which was my career more than you know my mm-hmm. like finding love and getting married and I think the environment as I said it influences you in this in the choices that you make because my mom was uh, was a single parent mm. and she was working so i wanted to be able to provide for myself yeah. and that's all that she's wanted for me is to be able to provide for myself and mm. never feel like i needed a man to provide for me but now when you get older you are you know a black independent woman <laughs> and then you, you're like okay now yeah. what I've, I've got into a space of, okay, I have all these things. And yeah. that's why I wanted to have this conversation of, yeah. okay, like, now, now what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and you being influenced by that um, kind of environment yeah. and the marriage culture in Ghana, yeah. then you, obviously, it's at the back of your mind. Yeah. And it's something that now you've committed to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, that. that's how my... I guess how I relate to the whole scenario and now mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, I'm here now and um, I'm old enough to get married, but that's not something that I grew up with. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like, what was the other question? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think um, in summary, like, do you, because like now you've mentioned that you grew up single mom she worked and the thing that she wanted for you was that Mm. you're self-sufficient now you're self-sufficient you're thriving you're self-sufficient you're thriving and (laughs) yeah thriving in in another country do you now feel that i now need to look at marriage as the last tick 
or is it more of a, I would do, this is something that I want, but I'm not, it's not a tick box exercise, but now it's for me, like this, I've done all this, but like the thing that I really want is mm-hmm. marriage. Like I do want marriage and I see how it can work in my life, even though it wasn't modeled coming in. And, and also just adding to that, would you feel any less fulfilled without getting married? Um, I think I would be fulfilled because I think I've gotten to a point where I realized that that's something that I could want and mm-hmm. I, I do want now, but I'm still living my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still living my life. I still find fulfillment in the things that I do in my friendships and my work and all of that mm-hmm. and doing this. Um, but I do generally think that the way that our society now is, is going yeah. It's telling young women that you don't have to ma- get married. Oh. You can get your bag first. But then you realize that at 30, 35, and Fritz is already married. <laughs> <laughs> the good ones are gone. <laughs> no, I, I guess maybe the good ones are gone. But you realize it's so late because you chase other things. Yeah. But I think what I loved about I love about your scenario is that it's something that has always been at the back of your mind. Mm-hmm. And... Now, how do you navigate being a young man, yeah. getting married, mm-hmm. and having expectations from society of this is how a married man must act, but also being surrounded by single people? Um, okay, so I try to drown out the noise of what society expects of me, mm-hmm. um, just because I'm not living to please them, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so... Like, people have different notions of what, like, you should act like or stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, and, like, as far as... <laughs> as far as... As far as um, I am happy and my wife is happy and I am not... My wife. And I'm not, and I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not, like, stepping on the toes of anyone, right? Mm-hmm. Or crossing certain boundaries with anyone. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I feel that... I can navigate to that. You get mm-hmm. it? And like they they are like people can say that oh Fritz, why are you here? Or yeah, why are you doing this? Or mm-hmm. why are you doing mm-hmm. that? But I'm like, okay, first of all, who are you? Like <laughs> who, yeah, like um I'm not I'm not crossing any boundaries and I'm not doing things that like you guys would say that oh yeah, I don't like it when you do this or stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. So so if 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 I do something like that and it's pointed out to me and I see like the logic behind it, I'll be like, okay, I will amend my actions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, because yeah, you're, you're like, you've decided to live mm-hmm. life with someone, right? Yeah. So you have to adapt and adjust. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's how like I, I think I'm going to navigate it and that's how okay. I have been doing in like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like how many months now? <laughs> Um, but like, I think especially as a man, you yeah. know the challenges of like, bef- like it's not just going on one knee to yeah. get married. Like yeah. there, there are a lot of decisions you have to think about. Okay. Mm-hmm. The finances where yeah. you're going together, yeah. not feeling like really like what like let's say you dealing yeah you have someone that's like hey, I'm about like I love this person, mm-hmm. your finances. Can you ever be ready? Yeah. Um, like, I love this person. I, I see my future with this person. Yeah. But, like, w- yeah, like, will, will I ever feel like I'm ready? Or do I, is there something that I just need to choose and go for it? The answer is mm. you will never feel like you're ready. <laughs> yeah, no, you will never feel like you're ready. Trust me. Um, and this is a conversation, like, I've had with my sister, which is, like, who is, like, a common copy of me. Um, and like you, you never feel like you're ready, right? Mm-hmm. Because how much finances is enough finances? Um, how much level of emotions is enough? Mm-hmm. Like how mm-hmm. much, how much knowing a person is enough? Like mm-hmm. you, you like there are certain things you'd have to explore. And if you think about it from an exploratory perspective, then you're like, okay, it can be a fun adventure, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um. So so like um. I, I, I don't think you would ever be ready. Mm-hmm. And so it's just about like um going like 
head in first, <laughs> and and then and then whatever challenges or whatever situations arise, mm. we would make the best decision together. Mm. Mm. Because yeah. of the name. Uh-huh. So that, I think, yeah, summary that firstly you'd never be ready. Yeah. Secondly, yeah, this person you will never know, like, cause that's, like there's never a point where I'm sure there are things you know about your wife now that you didn't know before, and. Like in in a good way, like yeah. those things that like because you're constantly knowing, you're getting to know someone. Yeah. So as a result, there's this thing of there won't be a st- you just need to accept that yeah. okay, I'm ready. Like I want this person in my life yeah. for good, and that yes, it it would never. And I think as men, like one thing I love about what you just said is that we're gonna do this together. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. as men, I know we sometimes like to do things. By ourselves. Oh yes. So that yes. thing of looking hey, for yeah, like <laughs> looking for like I need to, I need to sort out the finance. I need to have the the plan. I need to have this. I need to do this. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes can be quite overwhelming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how yeah also how do you how do you like especially making these big decisions as a man? Okay. How do you look at that? like on a day to day like do you like okay this is my five year goal or are you this is the idea that I want. How I'm gonna the roadmap? I don't know how it is, but I know this is where I'm going to be. Mm. I mean, we did we did say that like like plans change and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? So um, I for me like there's a general idea, and then um, like lighting my path, like <laughs> like the, like each step like opens up like what the next step is going to be mm-hmm. right so um yeah i think that's how i think about it i have like a general overview of what like is going to look like mm-hmm. um so each step like I, yeah each step then comes and then mm-hmm. i i look at it that way um but i think in terms of the decisions right mm-hmm. um <clears throat> A huge part of me likes to make the decisions autonomously, um, <laughs> and 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 um, like like this whole like getting her to come to the UK and stuff like that. Um, I'm just like, yeah, come, I I will handle it, right? <laughs> and so so like looking for a place, I did, but of course, like I sent her videos of like this place, and she mm. and she had input on the kind of place she wants to live as well, mm. um, or how close it is to Central London and stuff like that. Um, so, so, um, so I consider that, so like I asked like, what do you want? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So she was like, okay, this and this and that. And then I consider that in coming to my decision. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, but, that's uh, ultimately you will lead, I'll say. Um, I think that that's the thing. You see, we both have, like each person has their strengths, mm-hmm. right? So you should know where your strength is and where you should lead us and then, yeah, it's like it's like the situation at the food store where like the woman the waitress brings like the wrong order mm. and like the woman is like, mm, my husband said this or my boyfriend said this, go and change it, right? Mm. Guys would just be like, come. Oh. <laughs> so so they they like each person has their strength mm. and you should allow the person to flourish in mm. their strength. That's so good. Yeah. That's so good. You spoke about finances that you yeah. can never be ready and mm. and something that you also mentioned is like your emotional well-being yeah. how are you ever going to be ready to be like okay i can commit to this yeah. and a big part of people not wanting to get married is do i have the right person is um am i ready to commit yeah. do i really want to make a lifetime commitment and just choose this one person what if something happens yeah. and um so scared of divorce yeah. and i think people have said yeah, I don't want to get married. Have you seen the divorce rate? Mm. Um, I guess, like, just speaking to the commitment part, what yeah. would you say to someone that's like, no, have you seen the divorce rate? And I, what if I commit to this person and it's not the person? Yeah. And, yeah, just around commitment, um, what would you say to men out there? Ask me uh, for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I think um, adaptability is a huge thing, Ooh. right? Mm. And... Um, because you are not going to be the same throughout your life, right? So then if, if along the changing situations, um, and you can assess that w- during your relationship period, like, mm-hmm. um, like maybe you were with someone, you've moved to the UK, 
how the person has tried to adapt to the changing scenarios, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so adaptability is a huge part. Mm. And if if you find someone that you think is adaptable, mm. I think is a huge part of making your decision. Um, same looking at the look at the divorce rates as your cop out. Mm. Um, the mouth proposes and the mouth resists. Like, mm. uh huh. So, mm. so, um, sorry, I've been, I've been thinking of that line all day. I heard it yesterday. <laughs> That's a good line. That <laughs> um, so, Quite good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, like, maybe we need to change your language surrounding those things, mm. Mm. right? So, like, okay, the divorce rates may be high, but you get it. I'm not going to be part mm. of the state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and not that I, di- I view divorce in a, like as a negative, right? Mm. I, I don't. Um, I think that there are certain situations that may be untenable, mm. and then there's not much you can do about it. Mm. Um, but but like changing your lingo around certain things is a huge part of changing your mindset wow. around it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. No, that's. I think like your wisdom has come out today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know that when we have conversations, we sometimes don't go this deep. But I think one of the things that I, I love first is that your honesty. Mm. Secondly is saying that those yeah people that are looking at oh, all these other things, they're just using them as excuses. Mm. Because I remember once as when I was in my small group, I was telling them that, yo, like, because they were asking me, like, hey, Joe, when are you getting married? And I'm like, I don't, I don't feel, and it's like, hey, do you want this or not? Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that they asked me, that, like, do you want to get married? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes. And like, yeah, then what, what are you waiting for a feeling for? Mm-hmm. What are you waiting? So they were like, so just like how you're the saying this. a feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, this thing of, ah, because, Especially these days, we're fed so much information. Yeah. Mm. So as you're saying, like, yeah, 60, 50% mm. divorce rate. We hear of all these things. And, but the question is, do you still want it? Yes, mm. this is what the information may. Yeah. But like, as I guess for me, as a believer, is that God will make a plan. Mm. Yeah. And how, what are the chances of us surviving in the UK? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, if we had to look at those stats, we would have never left home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but when we get to marry, this is where we draw the line. Mm. Yeah. So we, we're clearly picking and choosing mm. the things. So I think the thing that I love about what you're like, yeah, you'll never be ready. Yeah. Mm. Yes, statistics say this, but do you want this? Yeah. Mm. And pick someone that firstly adapt adaptability yeah, that was good. so adaptability on their side but also on your side because yeah. i can imagine now living in another country mm-hmm. doing long distance mm. you have all your friends around you yeah. it's so easy to just focus on us oh, and, yes. Yes, and oh, then yes. not and not <laughs> and not give your partner the attention that they deserve yeah. so like the fact that now you're doing marriage, like I, I just want to, uh, I hope yeah. you understand that yeah, yeah, you're yeah. quite great at what you're doing. Like, <laughs> uh, I know you don't think of yourself that way, <laughs> just because you're quite humble. Mm-hmm. But we're just well, really, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're really grateful that you are here mm-hmm. and we learned a lot. And I hope the audience has learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Please like subscribe comment mm. we're in a new venue today so please let us know if you like it or not i love the venue <laughs> <laughs> um but thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your week i haven't said my piece <laughs> <laughs> not um, <laughs> much <laughs> yeah um yeah i just want to say like mm. thank you so much and i do have a last question oh okay, Ooh, okay. Hey. for a friend okay. <laughs> How important is it for um, Ghanaian men to marry um, Ghanaian women? Huh. Um, yeah, I think I think I think I think typically I think as Africans, right, you would want to or you are typically pushed, not even pushed, it's recommended that you marry from like your tribe or something mm. like that right so mm. that 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 goes throughout like africa um <sighs> however <Sad for me. laughs> however um i think it's just a balance between 
and wait, let me, let me. <laughs> there, there are some. Pra- this I, I needed to say this. There are some practicalities to marrying from your own tribe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's not let's not like throw it in the bin that it is not a good idea. Like mm-hmm. there are some practicalities to it, or marrying from like people within your same village or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. Um. However, given given what I said about like think like modern generations and stuff mm. like that right um i don't think people are really high on that anymore mm. um and people shouldn't be mm. if that makes sense like you love who you love mm. right and whether they are from next door or they are from a thousand miles away like as far I as i have died every day wait how long have you been waiting to sing <laughs> <laughs> so so um whether 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 they are like from a thousand miles away to the extent that you find your love in that person mm. um yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't let it stop you right um yeah. yeah so 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 yes like traditionally they really recommend that you you marry from it but it's not a huge thing mm. yeah and baby um I think for us is it's different especially as a guy okay. like because who like they'll be coming into my culture mm-hmm. so i think it's not like that big like i've never been told hey don't go there or marry a baby woman like my my current partner she is so have they told you about this a woman <laughs> <laughs> even i have it <laughs> <laughs> um no like so i think there's <laughs> <laughs> they have warned you know? so they have i think you know? they have they have they have <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's more of um they've just been like obviously they've never told me that who i should but yeah. they were like just understand that certain cultures and certain traditions that yeah. this is what you're getting yourself into, into. <laughs> did you have to pay the mola um is there bride price yeah yeah so there is there is bride okay. price okay um um, and typically, like the girl's family just comes up with a list. Um, yeah. I I don't think it's as expensive as you guys do. <laughs> like, we are uh, expensive. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's, it's not as expensive as you guys, but um, there there are just a number of things that they put on the list for you to buy, and yeah. it shouldn't be too expensive. I think yeah, as a closer woman. <laughs> But as a closer woman, I know there's a lot of stereotypes and um, things that I said by about closer women, but we are great. Oh, are we you? are great. How oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we are great, and um, yeah, I've never, I've never um, had conversations around who you date and different tribes. Yeah. Um, but there is misconceptions around dating African, other Africans, okay. especially in South Africa. Yes. Um, so when I moved over mm. and probably bringing in maybe Ghanaian men or yeah. Nigerian men, I know there would be some talk. Yeah. But I think we are kind of moving and because we're integrating with other Africans, I yeah. think it's great. Um, yeah, anything else you want to say? To the men that are scared, <laughs> to the women that want to get married, <laughs> like what should I, I do? <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I probably shouldn't give advice <laughs> on the woman's side. Um, on the guy's side, as I said, like you, you will never hundred percent be ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whatever, whatever benchmark for readiness you have, um, how much of that is enough? Mm-hmm. Um. So, so like. Do it afraid. Yeah. <laughs> do it afraid. <laughs> so do it afraid. Um, yeah, that's and then and then video. and then just go for it. Right? Mm. Make mm. it work as it goes. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Anything else you wanna say? He <laughs> 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 yeah. already said his I've, 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 I've already said my goodbyes. <laughs> but I I think the main thing is that if you are going to listen to people, make sure you listen to the right people. Yeah. Mm. Understand where they're coming from. Because everyone is going to give you advice that they think it's correct. So when you're <clears throat> coming for decisions like getting married, if you're going to talk to the person that's mad about their divorce, mm. <laughs> yes. if you're going to talk yeah. to the person that doesn't believe in marriage, yes, obviously it's good to get a holistic advice, but mm. 
go to the people that you want to be like, mm. ask them what the, their opinion is on it's something. Almost like having mentors. Mm. Yes, like, like yeah, yeah, mentors. <laughs> we basically like yeah. So we think of them from a career point of view, yeah. but we don't think of them in a life point of view. Yes. Like hey, I want to get married. Let me see. Let me hang out with people that have good marriages that I want to emulate. Because mm. mm. we do. We all know of marriages that are not the what we want. Yeah. So if you're gonna hang out with those people you might not have a reason so yeah. i think in summary go to people that, yeah get yourself mentors not just in your career but in your life yeah and this is why we have men's corner thank you so much gents um i'm so proud of this conversation i'm so happy that we had this conversation yeah. uh, we'll have more on men's corner and look out for the next video and thank you so much for the views and the love on the last video thank you so much see you on the next one bye, bye. thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe see you on the next one